Welcome to the Don Bosco Technical Institute physics lesson on vectors. This is going to be a three-part lesson. First part on vectors is just a general description of what vectors are and why we should care about them. Now I'm going to tackle that second part first, the why part. So we follow the Glencoe uh, physics principles and problems textbook and so far what we've done is we've done some 1D kinematics where you've been able to solve problems like if you throw a ball in straight up into the air and uh, it'll go upwards and eventually it'll turn around and go back downwards and you know how to handle the, this type of motion as long as it occurs in only one direction, in only the up-down direction. And similarly, we've solved some forces problems, like your typical mass being pulled across a level surface, and this will give you a free body diagram that will look something like this. you got normal force going up, weight going downwards, and your attention going this way, assuming it's a frictionless surface. Now notice that each of these forces points either straight up, straight down, straight to the left, straight to the right, straight forward, or straight backwards, depending on your system of orientation. Now if we were to impose a standard system of orientation on this, plus x this way, plus y this way, we could say that this motion occurs only in the y direction, and all of these for, uh, and, uh, the normal force occurs only in the plus y direction, the gravity occurs only in the negative y direction, or better way to say it would be that, that gravity acts only in the negative y direction, and tension acts only in the plus x direction. And this is useful for a number of problems, but what if instead of these uh, single dimensional problems, we had a ball that was thrown at an angle like this, and so it'll take a, a parabolic path like that. Okay? With diagonal uh, with diagonal quantities like this, we don't quite know how to handle that. And similarly, if you had a force problem where instead of the tension pulling directly to the right, what if it pulled up at a diagonal like this? Well, you could draw a free body diagram for that. That would give you a mass like that, and a tension like that, normal force here, gravity here. All right, normal force and gravity haven't changed here, but now tension is at a diagonal. And we don't know how to handle diagonal forces. But the goal for, be, uh, for the end of this vector unit is to teach you how to handle quantities like this. And really, all that these problems are is two of these problems. Okay, two, you can represent a two-dimensional problem as two one-dimensional problems if you have just one more um, mathematical trick, which is vectors. So that's why we use vectors to take a two-dimensional problem and break it into two one-dimensional problems. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what a vector is and how we write uh, and some of the associated notation. As with any definition, it also helps to not only say what a vector is, but it also helps to say what a vector isn't. So the opposite of a vector for the purposes of high school physics is a scalar, and a scalar quantity has magnitude only. In other words, the only uh, factor that's involved in a scalar measurement is answering the question, how much? How much of this particular quantity do you have? Now, contrast this with a vector as anybody who's seen Despicable Me knows, vectors have both magnitude and direction. 
Okay, so not only are you concerned with how much, but in which direction your quantity is pointing, acting, whatever the appropriate verb is. Okay, some specific examples. would include things like uh, of a scalar would include something like mass you say that a mass is five kilograms or three grams or nine hundred um, you know nine hundred megagrams all of these involve only answering the question how much mass do you have same thing with things like temperature pressure most of the things we measured in chemistry, mass, temperature, pressure, concentration, those sorts of things. Now, examples of vector quantities include almost everything we've dealt with in the force unit and the 1D kinematics unit. So that's going to be things like acceleration, velocity, position, displacement, and a lot of other quantities that we're going to learn about as the course progresses. Now, notice we have done a fair amount of work with mass as part of our um, as part of our force unit. Um, other familiar quantities that we've already dealt with that are actually scalars are speed, you notice the speedometer on your car only tells you how much speed you have. It has it gives you no information regarding which direction you're moving. And time is also a scalar quantity. You don't say five seconds backwards. Well, I just did. Waha! All right. Now, um, just so that you don't get too many surprises if you go on to an engineering program in college, there is a third type of quantity. It's called a tensor or a matrix. And that's, uh, that's complicated, and you don't need tensors or matrices uh, for this class. So let's just say not applicable over there. But it is a third um, a, a third way to describe certain certain quantities, certain particularly complicated quantities. All right, so if we got these two quantities, magnet, magnitude and direction, then we need some notation so that we know whether we're talking about the whole vector, whether we're talking about just the magnitude, or we're talking about just the direction. All right, so let's take a generic vector A, So I'm talking about notation a little bit now. Okay, so you've got a vector A. And if I write just the symbol with the arrow symbol above it, that means the entire vector, both the magnitude and the direction. So if I wanted to write a velocity vector, if I asked you what's the velocity, you would have to give me a magnitude and a direction, something like 5.03 meters per second due east. Now, if I put absolute value bars around the A, and some textbooks use a double absolute value bar, in math, these bars mean absolute value. In physics, the absolute value bars mean magnitude. So we're talking about just the magnitude of A. Just the magnitude of the vector. So if I was to ask you for the magnitude of some uh, of this velocity vector, that would be just how much velocity we have. In other words, the 5.03 meters per second part. And then another symbol is this angle symbol that you're probably familiar with from geometry. This means the direction of A.
And so applying that to our example of uh, velocity of 5.03 meters per second due east, if I was to ask for the direction of velocity, that would be due east. And if you take your north, south, east, west, uh, what's called the cardinal directions, and you turn it into an xy plane, and really you can think of any flat surface as an xy plane, then east becomes plus x, north becomes plus y, west becomes minus x, and south becomes minus y. So you could also call the direction of velocity zero degrees above plus x or zero degrees above the x-axis. And normally, if, if you don't have any context, then we almost always measure directions uh, as rotating counterclockwise from the plus x-axis. So you could just call this direction of velocity zero degrees because it is, in the, it is zero degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. All right, we started getting into the idea of, uh, of a graph or a cardinal plane here, uh, or, or cardinal directions. Let's expand on that a little bit. So if, since vectors have both magnitude and direction, we can represent them on a Cartesian plane, you know, your standard xy plane, And let's uh, let's actually take the time to break this up about uh, one centimeter. In, uh, I already messed that up. Okay, uh, let's go at about one centimeter increments here. We'll ignore that part. <laughs> All right, so will George Bush laugh there? George W. Bush, not the original one. Okay, so. and do the same thing in the vertical direction. All right, so we got our XY coordinate plane, all hunky-dory. Uh, our vector can be represented in what's called standard position. We're usually going to draw it in standard position. And what standard position means is that you represent, well, first of all, vectors are represented as arrows, arrows so that you know which way it's going. Um, and standard position means that the side opposite the arrow, in other words, the tail, is at the origin. So if we were to take some random vector here, Let's call this vector B. We already used vector A in the previous problem. All right, so we got vector B here. The length of the, it's in standard position, and the length of the vector is the same thing as its magnitude. So if, for example, we're representing our old friend here, the velocity vector of 5.03 meters per second, that means that this vector would have to be 5.03 units long. Now, I said earlier that the direction is usually measured counterclockwise from the positive uh, x-axis. As long as you're in the first or the, uh, or the fourth quadrant, you can think of it as positive angles are above the x-axis, negative angles are below the x-axis. Out here it's a little easier to think about it in terms of uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. All right, another way to represent angles is with the Greek letter 
Theta, this thing that looks like a figure eight. Um, it's not a figure eight, it's the Greek letter Theta. Now, getting a little bit into the next unit, the next video, you can also represent a vector as how far does it extend in the x direction. So this would be bx that I've drawn here in red. And of course, if you have, if you ask how far does it extend in the x direction, you can also ask how far does it extend in the y direction? So this is b y over here. So you got a total of four quantities that can describe a vector. You have the magnitude, in other words, how much of the vector you have. You have the direction. You have the how far it extends in the x direction, which is called the x component. And you have how far it extends in the y direction, which is called the y component. Last thing I'm going to say is that the last substantial thing I'm going to say is that since the x com x component is parallel to the x axis, y component is parallel to the y axis. These form a right ang angle. The whole thing forms a right triangle, and so all of that cool trigonometry you should have learned in your algebra classes applies to vectors.